right. Um, thank you so much. Um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us for this session today. Um, as we all know, diversity and inclusion is a cornerstone in open source communities and really, really important for open source communities to be able to thrive. And to that end, today we'll be speaking about um, Docs for All and how we can improve open source accessibility. Um, my name is Zainab Daudu. I'm a technical writer. I'm also the founder of Writech Hub, formerly known as Zaycodes, and a, a, an organization that is focused on technical content creation services. I'm also an open source programs manager. I create programs um, to help encourage more diversity and inclusion in open source community. And from that to that end, I'm also a diversity advocate, and hence the reason why. Um, I'm having this session today. I'm going to hand over to my co-speaker, Omotola, to introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, Omotola Yunis Omotayo, I use she are pronouns. I'm a community builder and also a women in tech and DEI advocate. I work with the Outreach um, Internship Program as one of the organizers and um, I work there as the community manager. I also founded Elegance Media, uh, which is focused on helping organizations and individuals to make the best use, effective use of online platforms. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Omotola. So for this session today, we are going to be looking at what accessible documentation is, why it matters to open source community, what are the benefits of accessible documentation, and also the intersection between inclusion and technical documentation. How do these intertwine um, actionable approaches to enhance accessibility? How can you boost accessibility in your open source communities and fostering a universal community? So this session is going to be beneficial to all open source communities, community builders, open source um, project maintainers, and all contributors and everyone in the community at large, because um, we believe that it is everybody's um, responsibility within the community to ensure that um, the open source community is accessible for all. So, and we'll go right in. Um, for us to be able to understand everything that we've talked about, you know, how to improve accessibility, accessibility within your open source community, we need to understand what it means. And um, to put it um, in the simplest way, accessible documentation is any document, guide, instructions, whatever it, um, document that you have within your open source community that is um, designed and format, formatted in a way that is easy for everyone within your community to under, understand and everyone that is looking to come um, within your community, including people with um, disabilities, persons with disabilities. So it's, and for us to be able to achieve accessible documentation, there are intentional steps that the open source, we as the open source community need to take um, for us to be able to achieve this accessible um, documentation. And that's why we're having this session to discuss all this today. So um, I'm going to hand over to my co-speaker to um, take it off from here. So if you someone know, asks you the question, why accessibility? Why does it matter in open source documentation? And who are the people, just like Zenab mentioned, that are going to like benefit from accessible documentation? The answer will be everyone. I'm going to tell you everyone. But uh, today, let's on this part, let's focus on um, persons that have one disabilities or the other, right? And when we talk about persons that have disabilities, we are talking about people who have um, impairment, cognitive impairment, motor impairment, people who um, have difficulty in seeing or reading and rely heavily on, say, um, screen reader to access your documentation. Um, for this set of persons, um, documentation needs to includes uh, things like alternative um, text, um, clear structure, which uh, we are going to be going um, in depth into very soon. And for persons who have um, hearing impairment, right, it is also very important because these persons um, will rely heavily on, they won't be able to rely on the audio part of your content, of your document.
So, um, it's why I mentioned everyone, not just people with that have disabilities, because we have people who are non-native language speakers, people who primary language is not the one which your documentation has been written in, people who need um, another form of aid, right, to understand and use your, doc your documentation. And we also have individuals um, who are not, um, who may be impacted by concentration and focus. I mean, um, neurodivergent individuals, right? Um, they, they are, their center of um, concentration is very like limited. So these kind of um, folks are uh, who we should put in mind when we're talking about um, accessibility, uh, especially when it comes to the documentation. So I'm going to be talking um, So I'm going to be talking about the intersection of the uh, voice talk about inclusion. I don't know if you can hear me. Hi, I can hear you. Is it better now? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, so let's talk about inclusion, right? Um, think about your community or your target audience as sets of diverse people, people who have um, different backgrounds, who have um, different abilities, just like we mentioned, people who have different understanding, who have lived different uh, experiences, different cultures. This different set of people makes a diverse a diverse target audience, right? And when this comes to your documentation, your documentation or you as a technical writer or a community leader um, having the mindset of diversity having the mindset to include the various diverse um, sets of target audience that you have out there so when you're writing your documentation you thinking about who are the persons that are going to benefit right now from this documentation and later who are the other persons that are going to benefit from this documentation or can't even come across this uh, um, this documentation. So as a technical communicator, yeah, a technical communicator who wants to explain and ensure that everybody understand um, and make um, everybody understand and have access to the documentation, it is very important to come into center when it's to inclusion and technical documentation um thank you so much omotola so um omotola has said a lot you know about the intersection between technical um inclusion and technical documentation as open source communities we are always um striving you know to have more inclusive communities more diverse um community members to be able to um gain from the benefits of having an inclusive community and um, as I mentioned earlier, it is everyone's responsibility within the community. And some of the principles that um, community builders, open source project maintainers, you know, um, technical writers can employ in ensuring equity and inclusion in technical um, documentation within the community is awareness. So one of the major challenges of um, having accessible documentation is that people don't even know or realize that um, they need to be really thinking about things like this. Yes, some people have an idea, but when it comes to implementing documentation, um, do people understand, you know, what people, what audience with disabilities, what are their needs in terms of, you know, accessing your documentation, using your documentation? So the first step is awareness, ensuring that everyone within the community, um, contributors, maintainers, everybody, um, are aware of you know the the goal of having an accessible documentation then establishing clear guidelines that community members can follow in creating this documentation then you have to conduct accessibility audits after establishing your guidelines you have your documentation you need to conduct regular audits regular checks on your documentation to ensure that the documentation is following the guidelines that have been set out for accessibility testing your documentation with diverse audience, not just um, within, within the maintainers or within, test it with everyone, put it out to the community, 
um, put it outside the community for people to test it, you know, and give feedbacks on all these accessibility measures that have been put in place, um, optimize the documentation for different um, devices. We um, Remember some of the people um, we talked about with disabilities, it might even be due to, you know, situations or scenarios you find yourself, you are not able to access your documentation on the laptop. Can I easily access it on my mobile easily without any issues? And then you have um, feedback loop. Um, so as <coughs> um, having accessible documentation is something that is continuous. And for us to keep um, improving, we need to implement great feedback um, circle with, with the community, with the testers to ensure that we keep upgrading the documentation as needed. And then as a technical writer, um, we also like have a, a major role to play in creating documentation that is accessible. As technical writers, um, the goal is to create um, good documentation for a target audience. So, and in creating um, accessible documentation, there are questions that technical writers need to ask themselves to be able to do this. And the first is, who is, who are the people, who are the persons that are part of your audience based on all the analysis that you have done, you know, in creating that document? Who, who are the audience? Who are the people that are going to be part of those those audience. Are you trying to capture everybody? Are you trying to capture persons with certain disabilities? Then you begin to think about what are the things I need to put in place to be able to reach these people. And then you think about who might be excluded. So this could be intentional or unintentional in terms of, am I creating content in only video um, format that only people um, that can hear can 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 um, access or am I creating document um, putting um, important information in images where screen readers are going to miss those information so when you <coughs> think about who might be excluded who might we be excluding and how are we excluding these people and then which brings me to the third question which is is any important information being withheld so this could also be intentional intentional or unintentional are you um withholding any information um through maybe the way you are organizing your document are you hiding important information in a way that it's not e easily accessible um so when you ask yourself these three questions before you start creating your documents and are able to give um, answers to the questions as a technical writer, it helps you to be able to create um, accessible documentation. And then which now takes um, us to the actionable ways or the practical approaches to now ensuring that this document is accessible when you start writing. So the first step is to use clear structure and headings in your document. So as a technical writer, when, you, when you've when you gathered all your information, you know who your target audience is, you've gone through other phase, you want to start creating your document. Most times you start with, you know, a rough outline. Um, you want your outline and your structure to be as clear as possible. Um, we've seen documents where um, the headings, you have like H1, H2, H3 headings scattered across the document without properly organizing um, each topic or each heading under where it's supposed to be, you know, mixing things, um, putting information under the wrong headings. Um, we understand that as open source communities, it's not always the case of you create your outline. Sometimes you have to make updates to the documentation. Most times, it's not even sometimes, you have to update your documentation as you bring in new features. It's important that as you carry out this update, you ensure that throughout the whole process, the outline, you still maintain a clear structure and outline for your document so that when people or everyone is trying to access your document, it's easy for them to understand, to follow um, the structure and understand um, what's in the document. The next is to provide alternative text for images. Yes, we know that it is good to use um, images um, while creating your technical documents, but then images should all only be used as a supplementary to the text. They should not be used 
to replace information that should be in the document. If you're using images in your document, the images should only carry information that should not carry important information. For instance, um, you shouldn't have images with tables or maybe I've seen, you know, images where you have like difference between this, um, this and that. And then you have that kind of information in an image. Yes, it looked nice. But if someone is accessing that document with a, a screen reader, they are going to miss that information. And then whenever you have to use image, use all text so that um, they can easily pick up um, what that image is um, while going through the document. The next is to use readable fonts and colors. So if you're using colors, um, if you're using um, colors in your document, the fonts and the color should be something that is easily re readable. Um, the color contrast um, of the document should be right. So it's easy for everybody to easily um, use the document. There are color contrast um, checkers. There are tools that you can use to check, check out um, this um, functionality on your documents online. So ensure that the font is clear, the sizing is not too small. Um, you're using um, a clear um, colored text on a clear background. For instance, don't use light text on light background, dark text. There are basic um, um, rules behind the usage of text and colors. So uh, as open source communities, we need to ensure that we take note of these things when we are creating um, our documents. Use plain language, simple, um, simple language. You know, you ask some people questions about what technical writing is, and they think, oh, technical writing is about writing big, big grammar. But we all know that that's not the case because text is already, um, tech is already complex as it is. And it is important for us to be able to break down these complex um, terms in a way that everyone can easily understand. And we can only achieve this by doing things like using simple language, using simple sentences. Um, your sentences should not be hard to read, be direct, provide examples, you know, illustrations to help people understand what you're trying to talk about, have use cases, use bullet points, um, use things that people can relate to to explain what you're trying to explain. Just make it um, as clear and as simple and as concise as possible. And then use um, interactive elements, um, table of contents. Use this also limited um, in a limited way. Don't, um, because these elements are good, but then um, there has to be guidelines in how you use things like collapsible sections also ensure that you don't hide important information. But then when you have a document that is really long, you have a lot of things and then you want people to be able to skim through the important content without all the other information disturbing them. You can put this in collapsible sections. You can have code samples and things like that to probably to explain your documents more and make it more accessible. And then um, consistent format. This is also really important, use of fonts. I know that now, nowadays, a lot of open source communities use um, things like Markdown, which is really good. But for um, cases where those are no use, ensure that your font styles, your sizes, and even when you're using Markdown, you still have your styling, your CSS, and all that to style your text. Ensure that you're using consistent font styles and sizes across your document, um, accessible um, color contrast, consistent accessible color contrast that people can relate to. So in some cases, you're not using um, good contrast, while in others, the contrast is not so great. Um, consistent list, just make your document consistent. Um, and this is easily achievable when you have a style guide that the community can follow. That's the best way because, I mean, as open source communities, you have a lot of community members coming to contribute to your documentation, coming to improve it. So you want to ensure that you have like consistent formatting across um, by using a style guide. And then we have a few open source communities that are currently, you know, prioritizing accessibility and they've um, posted out reports to show that this has improved their open source 
um, communities in so many ways. We have liberal office, you know, prioritizing features like screen reader support, keyboard navigation, and this makes it a preferred choice for users with disabilities because of all these things that has been put in place. And then it also has positive impact on the project in itself because it has an expanded user base, you know, and, you know, its repetition is also reinforced within the community as an inclusive community. We also have TensorFlow um, extended documentation, you know, that is also um, working towards providing, uh, making its um, community more accessible. So it has ensured that all machine learning practitioners can access its um, documentation and be able to build and use this platform which has also helped it to you know extend its user user base have a broader community of you know users that effectively understand how to use this um product or this platform and and are you know happy about using it so um I'm going to hand over to Omotola here to. Thank you, Zainab. Um, I think Zainab has already explained like uh, the most of it. And um, talking about fostering a universal community, it is essential that um, universal community, diverse communities, that's what I mean, all right, um, is focused on ensuring their documentation is accessible by everyone, regardless of their background or their ability, in order for them to actively uh, participate and even use um, their open, the open source projects. Um, so what we're talking about is not just um, in the advantage part, it's not just going to remove the obstacle for individuals that have disability, but it's going to like make the project, the community even more open and welcoming to a larger audience um we mentioned um different um benefits which include um collaboration um is going to reduce the barrier of participation so people who probably use screen reader will not have to complain about they can use it and that way you are empowering contributors and all together everybody is going to have a positive and you know effective um, user experience and that way people are going to um, stay back in your community, stay back in your projects, continue building, continue enhancing your projects and the community. And in summary, it's going to like be um, a very good way to improve um, diversity in the open source ecosystem, to improve inclusion, and to improve um, global accessibility. Um, next slide, please. I'm going to use... Um, I'm going to use... Um, Asrichi, I mentioned earlier that I um, am one of the Asrichi organizers. Asrichi is a remote um, internship opportunity where folks are, uh, are subjected to system, systemic bias and impacted by underrepresentation in the technology country they are living in, contribute to open source and open science projects. And so far over the years, Outreach organizers have been able to like work with community projects to improve their documentation, their open source practices to make them eligible for the outreach internship because we are focused, our target audience, the program target audience is to bring in diverse population, diverse person, right? So we want to like imagine our intended participants who needs to use like a screen reader, who needs to use um, like an, who needs to see like an alt text on an image, who needs to like be able to like read that documentation very well. And so far we have um, received uh, positive um, responses, feedback, from our surveys that um, communities find it like easier to participate in outreach because it's not only help them to improve their practices, it's also help them to onboard more persons to contribute to their projects and to use their projects in a very awesome way. Uh, this is um, outreach is one of the um, Zenab mentioned initiatives that have been um, practicing um, um, accessible documentation so far, and that's which is one of the initiatives that has been successful in that aspect, and not just us doing it alone, but also doing it with other open source and open science projects. Um, thank you. I think we have come to the end of the slides. Okay, so uh, thank you so much, everyone, for coming to our session.
now we are going to be taking questions and then um, if you have any questions for us we are going to leave a contribution thank you and Zainab, for your presentation actually very important presentation thank you so much um for audience online audience please put your questions in the chat i can read them out uh, for the speakers in the meantime anyone in the room have a question if there's a question you can there's one microphone just um so my question is like maintaining documentation and getting it updated regularly uh is always a challenge and uh, i would think even more so in the accessible area because it becomes very confusing for people when the documentation doesn't match their actual experience do you have any recommendations on how you approach keeping documentation up to date so um i'm going to answer that question so yes um i think one of the best ways to achieve that is by um creating a good uh, back um route or loop with your community so when you have your documentation it's also important for you to have things like support you know help decks um places that people can easily like ask questions and you know um suggests improvements to the documentation also and then when you are creating your um processes for your product or feature updates it's very important that you attach documentation to that process and not make it a different process entirely on its own so that when things are going out um your documentation is also updated and then as process for your documentation you can now have your style guides your checks your accessibility guidelines that technical writers or contributors can use when they are uh, contributing to your documentation and working on your documentation and through the process of creating that document because you know for creating technical document a technical writer creates somebody has to review someone has to approve those prs so the people that are responsible for approving the PRs, um, merging the documentation, should also be aware of these guidelines and use them to ensure that these um, guidelines are adhered to when creating the document. And then you have your feedback from your users. If there is any feedback from them, you have your support channels. Um, I know um, within open source communities, most people are possible, it's possible to achieve this. I'm also going to add to that um, one other way to like um, in, to add to what Zainab has mentioned is to involve um, the target audience. So if you are looking at persons who have um, visual impairments, you might want uh, when you're creating that kind of documentation, people who understand who probably are using screen reader as well, make them part of the people um, documented that so that they can understand. So one thing that switch does is we have on our team persons who use screen reader. And when we review projects, that those are the things we push it to the person and say, how do you feel using this uh, project? How do you feel uh, contributing to this project? So that you'll be able to like get feedback directly from the persons involved. Thank you so much. And um, any other questions? Um, I don't have a question, but I would just like to echo the sentiment uh, that you mentioned around outreach and how it helps improve documentation and projects. Even if it's not a direct project, I have been working with Fedora as an outreach intern, a mentor, and now a community coordinator. And in the past four years, I've seen that every round we participate in outreach, at the end, we realize, okay, we need to upgrade our documentation or we need to improve it because we always find some sort of barriers or some some gaps that we discover during the contribution period so i think that's great and that will definitely helps improve our documentation thank you so much for adding that okay, thank you um we're out of time so again motala and zainab thanks a lot for doing the presentation thank you.